All right, time to jump back into these preview and game-by-game -game prediction videos. Of course, I'm doing a whole series of these. There's a playlist on this channel called 2022 Predictions. Click on that playlist, and you'll see the teams I've done so far, teams like Alabama, Miami, Wisconsin. Of course, up today is uh, Southern Cal. People always ask, uh, you know, how do I choose which teams I do or whatever? I get them off the Patreon page. So I've been doing this for five or six years. Every year around this time, I make a post on the Patreon page. Everybody over there leaves a comment underneath that post of the team they want me to preview. That's where I'm getting these teams from. So shout out to Brandon Wyatt today who wanted to see a preview and prediction video for the Southern Cal Trojans. So Brandon, thank you for supporting the channel over on the Uncle Lou Patreon page. That means a lot. If you're not on the Uncle Lou Patreon page and you want to check it out, there's a link in the description of this video. You can click that link. It'll take you over there. You can look around, uh, get signed up, find that post, and let me know what team it is you want to see me do a prediction for. But good morning, it's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou, live on YouTube for you today. Thanks for watching this preview and prediction video. I plan on doing about 50 or 60 of these. We're going to do them all through June, July, and even into August. Get as many as we done, get uh, as many done as we can before the season starts. If I do finish all the ones over on the Patreon page, then I'll start taking suggestions from other places like the YouTube comment section and things like that. But for the time being, until we're done with the list on Patreon, this is where I'm going to be getting the teams from every day when I sit down to do them. So let's talk about the Southern Cal Trojans. Now, this is not one I was really looking forward to do because I knew this was going to be difficult. And uh, after sitting down for about an hour and taking some notes and looking through some things, uh, I was right. I bounced around on three or four games for Southern Cal between wins and losses. Um, I, I bounced around three or four different overall records for Southern Cal before I finally landed on one. There's a lot of questions for Southern Cal not that aren't necessarily talent-related, particularly on offense, which we're going to talk a lot about the offense and the defense. If you've seen any of these videos before, you know the, the first half of the video, I kind of preview the team, the offense, the defense, the coaching staff, what's gone from last year, what's back from last year, transfer portal acquisitions, things like that. Second half of the video, I'll actually put the schedule up on the screen, go through it game by game, and give you um, a winner and a loser. But so much of... We've never seen a roster get overhauled like this in one offseason. The transfer portal's been around for a couple of years, and we've seen even really, really good teams. Use Alabama as, as an example this offseason. Alabama's loaded, number one recruiting class almost every single year. They went out and got a running back in the portal who's going to start for them. They went out and got a wide receiver in the portal that's going to start for them. They went out and got a defensive back in the portal that's going to start for them. People are using the portal. That's not a surprise. But 20 players Southern Cal went and got from the portal to try to help to overhaul this roster that was left over from Clay Helton, who, of course, was fired after last year, replaced by Lincoln Riley. We'll talk about him in a second. I was never that big of a fan of Clay Helton to start with, and I thought Southern Cal probably should have fired him a couple of years ago when Urban Meyer was available before he took the Jaguars' job. Should have thrown everything they had at Urban Meyer. They didn't do it, uh, but they threw everything they had, and then some, uh, at Lincoln Riley. And so Lincoln Riley comes in to take over as head coach. Now, he's inheriting a Southern Cal team that went 4-8 and eight last year. How bad is that for Southern Cal? That's the worst season they've had in 50 years. 50 years. But the problem is deeper than that. It's not just one bad season at Southern Cal. Southern Cal hasn't won more than eight games in a season since 2017. That's a long time ago. That was the last time they won um, more than eight games. Southern Cal, that should be unacceptable. And it is, and that's why Clay Helton uh, finds himself – out of a job, but let's talk about Lincoln Riley, okay? What are you getting with Lincoln Riley? Well, you're getting, in my opinion, one of the best offensive minds in college football. You're getting a guy who uh, high school players, offensive players, particularly quarterbacks, are going to want to come and play for. You're getting a guy who's been to the playoffs three times, and I, and I know he's yet to win a playoff. Every time he gets there, he gets beat. Okay, who else has been to the playoffs three times? Let's see. Uh, Nick Saban. Dabo Swinney. I believe that's it. Kirby's been twice. So he's been to the playoffs three times. He's produced two Heisman winners and multiple NFL quarterbacks. So you know what you're getting offensively with Lincoln Riley. My question is, don't you also know what you're getting defensively, which is nothing. You can't overemphasize how bad Oklahoma's defense has been under Lincoln Riley. You can't put it into words. Uh, I think it was 2017 when they played Georgia in the playoffs. Their defense was ranked 130th. There's only 130 teams. 
Now, there were years where the defense was a little bit better, but it was nowhere near the level that it needed to be, and it showed every year in the postseason, and that's why they have three playoff appearances but no playoff wins. He did change defensive coordinators at one point and brought in Alex Grinch. The defense improved a little, but not like a lot of people thought it would. And that's who he's brought with him to run the defense at Southern Cal, that same Alex Grinch. Now, Alex Grinch did great at Washington State. There was a three- or four-year period, 2015 to 2017, I think, where he completely turned that defense around. And by the time he left in 2018 to take a job at Ohio State, Washington State was in the top ten of almost every defensive category on planet Earth. Was at Ohio State for a short period of time and then came to Oklahoma. And we never really got to see if it was going to work out there because he was only there a couple of years. One of those years was the coronavirus year. And now he's gone off to um, Southern Cal. I do think Lincoln Riley has to reevaluate his approach to defensive football. You know, I I know he takes a hands-off approach and lets the defensive coordinator run it. But as a head coach, I think he's got to put more emphasis on the defensive side of the ball. If you look at Oklahoma's recruiting classes under Lincoln Riley, they were pretty good recruiting classes. But if you go and look at any given year at the top 10 players they signed in any given year, eight or nine of them are offensive players all the time. Um, Offensive linemen, no problem to get. Quarterbacks, wide receivers, they were even getting really good running backs. The problem was on defense, particularly defensive line. They were undersized. They poor fundamentals. they They didn't have the talent or really the technique on defense that they needed to compete at the high level of college football once they got into the postseason. That's my question about Lincoln Riley in general and Southern Cal in particular. There's no doubt in my mind that, in you know, let's say Lincoln Riley stays at Southern Cal for the next 10 years. There's no doubt in my mind Southern Cal is going to be the best, the best program in the, in the uh, pack, I think I said Big 12, Pac-12. Let's say he stays at Southern Cal for the next 10 years. There's not a doubt in my mind that Southern Cal will be the best team in the Pac-12 over that 10-year period, the majority of the time. Maybe not every single year, but the majority of the time. It's going to be the best program over a 10-year period if he stays there. I don't have any questions about that. My questions are with Lincoln Riley all have to do with what happens in late December and January, playoff time. Those questions can't be answered until we see him get there and do something different than what he's already done. Um, let's talk about the transfer portal and the overhaul that went on um, on Southern Cal's roster from last year to this year. 20 players, like I mentioned, that's 25% of the team, uh, has been brought in this year through the transfer portal. And I'm not talking about guys who need to be, to be developed, guys who are going to be stuck on the bench, third string. Every single position group on both sides of the ball has players that are going to be starting this year at Southern Cal. And it's some big-name guys, some big-name guys. Some of them you know, of course, the quarterback, uh, Caleb Williams. But we're going to go through the list here. 24-7 ranks transfer classes now every year, and Southern Cal is way uh, beyond anyone else um, when it comes to the transfer rankings, uh, uh, when it comes to the transfer rankings for this offseason. Uh, All right, let's take a look at the offense, okay? So quarterback Caleb Williams, right? Didn't get the start last year. Spencer Rattler did at Oklahoma. He struggled early in the season. Rattler was benched. Caleb Williams came in, ended up becoming a first-team All-American and clearly one of the best quarterbacks in the country, and that was as a a true freshman. I don't expect there to be – it's only going to get better from here on out for Caleb Williams. He was a true freshman last year, thrown into the fire in week four, five, or six, whatever it was, shined the second half of the season – had some freshman mistakes, no doubt about it. But like I said, ended up being first team all freshman uh, or freshman all American last year, and heading into this season, widely considered one of the best three quarterbacks in all of college football and a Heisman contender, if not a Heisman favorite. Absolutely no question marks at all about quarterback Caleb Williams. Well, what about the wide receiver position? There's only two wide receivers on this roster that were on the roster last year for Southern Cal, and I'd be surprised if if either of those two actually start again with the transfer portal uh jordan addison the the bolitnikoff winner from last year the best wide receiver in all of college football last year at pitt played with kenny pickett right transfers from pitt to oklahoma mario williams oklahoma's number two wide receiver next uh last year transfers from oklahoma to southern cal uh brendan rice jerry rice's son i didn't even know this guy was in football transfers to Oak, to, to southern cal from colorado and terrell bynum from washington who's got 19 starts in the pac 12 those are going to be wide receivers one through four they're all legitimate wide receivers and jordan atkinson was the best wide receiver in all of college football last year so no questions at quarterback no questions at wide receiver well what about running back 
Lincoln Riley's offense, he's a genius offensively, one of the best minds in offense. And people think about the Lincoln Riley offense, they think of air raid. And that's true. They've had great quarterbacks, Heisman winners that have put up a ton of numbers, uh, 5,000 yard seasons, 40 and 50 touchdown yard uh, seasons. Oklahoma's been at its best, though, offensively when they've had really, really good running backs. Um, that's just a fact. That gets overlooked when it comes to Lincoln Riley's offense, in my opinion. So, who do they have at the running back position? Well, nothing left from last year, really, but don't worry. They went out and got Travis Dye from Oregon. How good is he? He's fifth all time on Oregon's rushing list. They bring him in. They go and get Austin Jones from Stanford through the transfer portal. Averaged 4.2 yards per carry last year and loves contact. Uh, Both can catch the ball out of the backfield, too. These are two perfect running backs for a Lincoln-Riley offense. What about the offensive line? They've got a couple of other running backs, too. I mean, they've got uh, – I don't even remember if I wrote these uh, uh, these down or not. Maybe I did. Yeah, junior uh, Darwin Barlow and a four-star, uh, Relic Brown. I mean, they'll play three or four running backs like most teams do, but Travis Dye is an absolute beast uh, at the running back position, and this guy from Stanford, 4.2 yards per carry. No questions about the running back. Offensive line, again, with the transfer portal. You bring in Bobby Haskins from Virginia, he's going to be your starting offensive tackle, period. Uh, You return uh, Andrew Voorhees at guard, not related to Jason Voorhees that I'm aware of, and a four-year starting center you return. So you're going to have a great offensive line, you're going to have great wide receivers, great running backs, and a great quarterback. Does this sound familiar? Yes, it sounds like every Oklahoma team I've ever seen under Lincoln Riley. I don't have any questions about this offense, none. What about defense? Well, Alex Grinch, defensive coordinator, I talked about that already. Did great at Washington State, wasn't at Ohio State long enough to really prove anything, then on to Oklahoma for a COVID year, and then last year, again, not long enough to really prove anything, in my opinion. uh, Now Lincoln Riley brings him along to uh, Los Angeles and Southern Cal, so Alex Grinch is going to be running the defense. A terrible defense, at least last year. Gave up 31.8 points per game. That's absolutely horrendous. What's the defense going to look like this year? Well, you're going to have more returning starters from last year or more leftover pieces defensively from last year uh, than you are offense. But on the defensive line, and again with these kids' names, Thule, Tui, Pelotu. uh, uh, Yep, first team all Pac-12. These are defensive line guys. Led the team in sacks last year too. Uh, Nick Figueroa, uh, Figueroa. I'm pretty, I might be getting that one right, actually. Nick Figueroa, Brandon Peely, those are uh, two transfers. Uh, or those guys come back. Uh, no, those guys come back. Uh, they started last year. They're back. Defensive line will be okay. You got two transfers on the defensive line, too, though. T- uh, this Tallini kid from K-State and Earl Barquest Jr. from TCU. Again, these aren't household names. It just goes to show... There is going to be, we have never seen this in college football. This is going to be a test case. Um, You know, coaches for a long time have been hired at bad teams. And look, look, that's what Southern Cal was. And you can argue they're a bad program. They haven't won more than eight games since 2017. For 100 years in college football, we've seen coaches get hired in these situations. And we say the same thing every time. Well, look at what they're inheriting. There's, it's terrible. It's going to take three or four years to turn the roster over. The first year is a throwaway year. He's got to get three recruiting classes in there. That's out the window. That's out the window with this Southern Cal team. If Southern Cal were to go 6-6 six and six or 7-5, and five, it would, that would be an epic failure. An epic failure with the amount of talent and, and just the number of players they have brought in through the transfer portal, combined with the fact that they play in the Pac-12, and let's just be honest, there ain't a lot of hurdles to jump over in the Pac-12 right now. There's really not. Uh, so you bring in transfers in uh, on defense, just like you did on offense. Uh, linebackers, uh, Corey Freeman. Now, he's a former number one high school recruit, I think, overall, the number one player overall. He's been disappointing, but he was young. Can he improve under Alex Grinch? We'll see. He's a linebacker. He's going to have to play better. Again, with the transfer portal, you bring in a kid from Auburn, uh, Romello Height, I think is his name. Shane Lee from Bama. This guy's got 11 or 12 starts at Alabama. You bring him in at linebacker through the transfer portal. So here we are, defensive line, you bring in transfers. Linebackers, you're bringing in transfers. What about DBs? DBs, your DBs were pretty good last year, and you kept several of them. Two safeties return, they're pretty good. Uh, Your nickelback is coming back from an injury. Transfer portal in your secondary cornerbacks, right? You went out and got a couple of those, one from Colorado, 
uh, and uh, two transfers from Colorado, one from Colorado, one from Oklahoma, and a five-star freshman, Damani Jackson. There's going to be a lot of talent on this defense. Um, is it going to show in terms of production on the field? That's the unanswerable question, in my opinion. It is hard to get, for me anyway, to get excited or have 100% belief in a defense where Lincoln Riley is the head coach until I actually see it. If, if you're Southern Cal fans who, for whatever reason, have never followed Oklahoma and know anything about it, like I said earlier, I can't overestimate how bad they were defensively. I'm talking about people out of place, blown coverages, missed assignments, uh, tacklers that just can't they don't they lack basic fundamentals they can't wrap up on top of them just not being very talented overall it was just horrendous in every possible way uh, Oklahoma's defense was under Lincoln Riley I see a lot of names on here that I like I like Corey Freeman I like uh, I, I like uh, Domini Jackson uh, I like Shane Lee with a bunch of starts at Alabama I like a couple of these defensive linemen that you got uh, Corey Foreman, I think I mentioned him already. But Jesus, if, until I see a defense play well under Lincoln Riley, it's hard for me to buy completely in. Just being honest, that's kind of my overall feeling about Southern Cal as I start to look at this schedule, which I'm going to put up on the screen now. <sighs> They're going to want to know, can Southern Cal go 12-0? and 0? I, I guess they could. I mean, anybody could. Um, you know, Michigan made the playoffs last year out of nowhere. Uh, Cincinnati made the playoffs when nobody thought they could. We've seen teams have big turnarounds in short periods of time. Can it happen at Southern Cal again? Four and eight last year. Let's just start to go through this schedule and try to figure out, you know, how many are they going to win, how many they're going to lose, and again, it's one thing to look at a schedule and go, you know what? That looks like eight and four. Okay, well, tell me the four losses then because that makes it a lot harder. And 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 that's my goal. That's what I try to do here with these uh, with these videos. So up first, you play a starch. That should be a win. Uh, we'll just go ahead and pencil that in. You you should beat Rice. If for some reason, <laughs> Oklahoma, if, if Oklahoma doesn't score 50 points in this game, uh, then maybe you got some cause for concern, but Oklahoma should have absolutely dominate in that one. Hard to believe uh, Rice will give Southern Cal. I keep saying Oklahoma over and over again. I apologize for that. I'm, I'm, it, uh, clearly, I'm talking about Southern Cal. Now, week two, you got to go on the road and play Stanford. And, and, and I've heard from Southern Cal fans, and they say, well, Stanford was terrible last year. Yeah, they were, and they beat you. Um, so, you know, anything's possible. With that being said, I don't see it happening this year. Stanford was terrible last year. Yes, but, uh, they did beat you last year. Yes. They haven't overhauled their roster and coaching staff like Southern Cal has, though. And even though this is on the road, not a huge uh, home field advantage for Stanford, I don't think anyway in terms of home field advantages across college football. I don't think it's a place that many people are intimidated uh, or afraid to go play. I think Southern Cal gets to win. I love David Shaw, but, man, he's got to get it turned around quick, fast, and in a hurry, too, or he could find himself uh, standing in the same line that Clay Helton is standing in uh, last year, which is the unemployment line. Now, I want to talk about this week three game, Fresno State. Fresno State is a really good team, a really good team that returns a lot of talent from a 10-win team a year ago, and they beat multiple Pac-12 teams almost every single year. They, hell, they almost beat Oregon last year. They only lost to them by, I think, 7, 31 to 24, something like that. They're a really, really good team. Don't sleepwalk or get caught sleeping or looking past this Fresno State game. Fresno State, this will be Fresno State Super Bowl. Um, nothing would make Fresno State happier than to humble Southern Cal early in the season after all the hype Southern Cal has gotten all year uh, about Lincoln Riley and the new offense and Caleb Williams and all that. Nothing would make Fresno State happier uh, than to show up at the Coliseum and absolutely embarrass Southern Cal. While I think it's possible that could happen, it's very hard to predict right now that it actually will. I've got Southern Cal starting off 3-0. and Now, these next four games, in my opinion, this is what took me so long to come up with my overall record and, and wins and losses for Southern Cal today when I sat down to do this, okay? 
I can see a scenario where Southern Cal beats all four of these teams. But I don't think they can beat all four of these teams in a row. Um, in fact, I don't even think they can beat three of these teams in a row. Um, I, I think they're going to go two and two over these next four games. It's not because I question Caleb Williams. It's not because I think they're not going to be able to run the ball. Uh, they've got great wide receivers. <laughs> I've been watching Lincoln Riley for too long. The defense will let you down at some point, in my opinion. And these next four games, two of them, uh, two of which are on the road, is at Oregon State, which I think is going to be better than people think. Home against Arizona State, who I also think is going to be better than people think. Arizona State was kind of hyped up last year. Arizona State's kind of the North Carolina of the Pac-12. North Carolina was hyped up big time last offseason. Crap to bed. I think it was a year too early for North Carolina. Same situation here with Arizona State. I think Arizona State has potential to be a pretty good team this year. They brought in a couple of transfer quarterbacks. One of them goes by the name of Emory Jones. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. But uh, And then home against Washington State again. These are three teams that the average college football fan looks at and goes, well, none of those teams are any good. Okay, they're they're better than you think they are. And then the fourth one, of course, at Utah, who you know won the Pac-12 uh, uh, last year and has been the most consistently good team in the Pac-12 over the last four to five years. Them and, and maybe you put Oregon in that category too. That's going to be a really tough game on the road at Utah. So how is Southern Cal going to do in these four games? Again, I went back and forth on several of these games here several times. I think you're going to win this first one on the road at Oregon State. Okay? So I'm going to give you a win there. No, lose that one. I got it backwards. <laughs> you're going to lose on the road and win at home. Now, it, it, look... I, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to have a problem with what I'm doing for this four-game stretch here. And believe me, I get it. This is very hard to do. Um, I, I I look at Southern Cal, and it, it's hard for me to imagine that they're going to go 10-2 and two in um, Lincoln Riley's first year. I don't like to do this, so I, I almost forced myself to find a a a third or fourth loss or something. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I almost forced myself to do it. I don't really – I'm not confident that you'll lose on the road at Oregon State, but I've got you losing. I'm not 100% confident you'll beat Arizona State at home either, though, uh, and I've got you winning that one. And then again with Washington State, I've got you winning that, I think mainly because I, – I guess I just picked these two games because they were on the road. I mean, it is more likely that a team will lose a road game than it is a home game, generally speaking. But I do think Southern Cal loses two of these four games. At Oregon State, home against Arizona State, home against Washington State, and at Utah. I think you lose two of those games. Again, I don't make my record predictions by just putting the schedule up on the screen and going, well, that looks like eight and four. I, I don't do that. That's, you know, okay, where are the four losses then? Well, I at least attempt to name them. This is, like I said, this is this is a very difficult schedule to do because of the unknowns about... We know how much has been replaced on that roster, but it's a lot of different parts and pieces from different parts of the country, from different teams that have been running different offenses. How quickly can they come together, right? We know Caleb Williams and Mario Williams, the wide receiver, have played under Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma, so they'll be okay. But what about these two running backs? What about the offensive linemen? What about the other wide receivers? So I do have some questions, even though I think the, the offense is ridiculously loaded when it comes to talent. But I've got you losing two of those four. Then you have a bye week. You come out of your bye week, you go on the road to Arizona, which has been one of the worst Power 5 teams in America uh, consistently over the last few years. You come back home, you play Cal, that uh, they're barely better, in my opinion, than Arizona. I think you win those two games relatively easily. Uh, then you've got a, a home game against Colorado before a couple of rivalry games in a row, which, again, I think is a tricky part of the schedule. I think you've got that four-game stretch between Oregon State, where you go on the road to Oregon State and on the road to Utah, that four-game stretch there, the two home games come in between. I think that's a tricky stretch of games. And then I think these last two uh, sets of games are tricky as well. UCLA, I'm not very high on them overall. Chip Kelly's been disappointing to me since he got there. He's been there long enough now 
to where we should know what he is and what he isn't. And if that's the case, then we know it isn't going to be great, right? I've got you winning one and losing one. Um, again, I'm not 100% confident in which ones it will be, but I'll try to pick a winner and a loser here. I've got you beating your crosstown rival, the Bruins, and losing uh, to Notre Dame. Um, I have questions about Notre Dame, too, though. You know, they've got a brand-new coaching staff with a coach that's never been a head coach before. So I've got questions there, too. I know Southern Cal's got a new coaching staff, but it's not a new. he's not new to being a head coach. He's been a head coach for four or five years, Lincoln Riley. Um, Notre Dame's head coach has never had head coached a, a single game in his life. So I've got Southern Cal at 9-3, and three, which I, out of all the previews I've done so far, I have a feeling people are going to have the biggest problem with this one. And I kind of get it because expectations, I think anyway, have been pumped up to an unrealistic level, at least for year one at Southern Cal under Lincoln Riley. I don't have a doubt in my mind that in three, hell, by next year maybe, two to three years, Southern Cal probably will be and probably should be the favorite in the Pac-12 from that point forward almost every single year. I still think Utah probably has a little bit better of a chance to win the Pac-12 um, this year than Southern Cal does, and maybe even Oregon second after Utah, and maybe then um, a Southern Cal. There's no real reason, though, why Southern Cal should be worse than the third best team in the Pac-12, but there's really not a reason they ever should have been more uh, worse than the third best team in the Pac-12, and they were for a lot of years under Clay Helton. But anyway, there you go. That's my official Southern Cal prediction. Uh, I'm not very confident in this one. Like I said, there are certain teams in college football this year, whether it's because of the transfer portal or, or some other reasons, that are just huge, huge question marks. I, mean, yeah, I, I put Florida in that category. I obviously put Southern Cal in that uh, category. Oklahoma is another one. Dan, Dan Lanning, never been a head coach either. And Oklahoma lost a lot of offensive talent to the transfer portal when Lincoln Riley left. There are certain teams I just... It's not that I don't think they can be really good. It's just there, there's, there's a lot of unknowns. Um, and Southern Cal, I think, falls into that category. Now, most teams who went 4-8 and eight and followed it up by going 9-3 and three would be absolutely ecstatic. But like I said, the hype train for Southern Cal went off the tracks a long time ago. I mean, I see people talking about Southern Cal making the playoffs this year. I see people talking about Southern Cal winning the national title this year. It's just way off the rails. Uh, I, I am definitely a buyer on Southern Cal in the long run, though. They are going to be way better than what we've seen them be under Clay Helton. There's no doubt about that. All right, I appreciate everybody watching. Have a great day.